Hello and welcome to another Next Wave DV gear review. I'm your host, Tony Reale. Today we're going to be talking about the Kame TV Mini Gimbal. Um, now, let's uh, taking a little step back, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our history with gimbals. Um, of course, a lot of people remember when the Mobi was announced, um, you know, kind of got a lot of people excited about the potential for gimbals as we did, were excited about it. Uh, but at 15 grand, it was not something that I was willing to throw cash on. Um, then later that year, a lot of DIY systems came out and we purchased one. Um, I ordered one and started assembling it and I quickly realized that this is not a project that I could uh, do on my own. Fortunately, Sean had experience with uh, copters and gimbals and that sort. That's so me! That's Shawnee. Um, and so he, he did a great job of, of putting it together and I will very much emphasize that I would not have been able to do that on my own without Sean. Um, it was just, it's just a project that was beyond my abilities. Um, so we did the DIY system. We use it for several projects. And uh, honestly, without it, we would not have been able to accomplish several looks, but it still wasn't the perfect solution. Then at NAB uh, last year, we all heard about the Ronin. We heard about the Helix. We heard about a lot of different gimbals. Those two are the ones that really uh, stood out to me, both in, in uh, cost effectiveness um, and uh, in functionality. But there was still a bit of a price jump uh, for me to want to just throw cash at. Um, then the Ronin hit a huge drop in price because of all the pre-orders. Went from forty-five hundred to three grand, and that's when I decided to sell my old gimbal and uh, and go ahead and jump on board with the Ronin. And so that's the this is the Ronin right here. We've been using it for several months now. We love it. This is our go-to gimbal. It's awesome for many reasons: toolless assembly, um, you know, the app integration, um, the ability to have uh, power taps built into it, and so much more. It's just an awesome gimbal. So this is the standard, and our producer director Jimmy over there loves it because we don't have to dick around with uh, uh, setting it up as much as the the DIY one was, which was just a headache. Yeah, it, the toolless design is awesome. Yes, and Sean, it's very fast for. Sean, I mean, I can set this up. The other one I couldn't <laughs> calibrate on my own. I couldn't do it. I needed Sean. So the Ronin allowed, like the first shoot that we had to do, Sean wasn't available. I had to set it all up myself, and I did. The previous one, Sean had to bring like his laptop plug into it. And we had to do a lot of calibration. Um, so just the, the design of the Ronin is really smart. So I say all of that to give you like we have some background experience with gimbals, um, and we have a standard now of what an ideal gimbal setup should be. Um, so all that said, here we've got the Came TV Mini Gimbal, and uh, there's a lot of things that this is similar to the Ronin, and there are a lot of things that this is completely has nothing to do with the Ronin. And so we're going to go over those, our experiences with it, and what I really think this is going to be like. So uh, first off, you can see it's smaller. The Ronin is a good size um, for, for most camera systems out there. Reds, um, you know, we shoot in the FS700. Um, and so it's a really great camera size for that. It also works well with the A7S if you're going to kit it out with um, like, a you know, I use Canon zoom lenses um, with a Red Rock Micro. Uh, wireless follow focus system and so you know, when you kit out that much stuff on the camera it becomes a bigger package and the Ronin works really really well with this um, and so we use this a lot for that type of setup but it also is big enough that it can't work with super small camera packages so one of my favorite setups for gimbal work is the a7s with the sony 10 to 18 millimeter f4 is uh, g lens it's a great lens perfect for uh, for gimbal work, it's because you got that 10 to 18 mil range, which is really ideal for gimbal. Um, it's got IS, so it can get rid of some of the the different things that um, you know the, the imperfections that you might get with a gimbal. And um, you know, it, it's you know, it's just a great lens. Um, so f4 is 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 relatively fast for what it needs to be. Constant aperture, so you don't have to change any of that setting. Um, good, great lens. But this camera package is so small that it actually can't work just on the Ronin by itself. So I actually have to uh, put this lens on like my FS100, and that's like the lightest camera package that I can put on here. And um, so the idea of being able to take this lens, this camera, which I, I love the a7s. I've, I've been loving it for a while. It's I call it like a mini FS700. The picture quality that I can get from that is awesome. I also have a Shogun now, so I can get 4K ProRes out of it. It's a great, great little camera. Um, yeah, I'll still use my 700 for a lot of stuff, but I love the a7s is like a nice little B mini camera to my FS700. So this system right here can really accomplish a lot as far as picture quality goes. Um, and the fact that I can't use it on the Ronin is sometimes frustrating because I just want to go autofocus and run around. Um, so the 
this little setup here gets me about 50% of the way of what I would need a gimbal for. Autofocus, you know, wide angle lenses, running around, quick setup. That's, you know, half of the stuff that we use to run it for. The other half we use it for is when we're doing oneers, you know, long shots, um, and we need to pull focus and stuff like that. You can't really put much more than this camera package on here. You start adding a bigger lens, you, you couldn't add a wireless follow focus or anything like that. So, you know, that's where you'd have to go back to a larger gimbal. So um, talking about design, these, you can see these cameras, this almost looks like a mini Ronin in the design. They have kind of this, you know, slanted design to the, the handle grips. Um, there's the metal, if you look at here, the metal rigidity um, is very similar to the Ronin. You know, it almost looks like they, they took the design of the Ronin. If you look at the backs, you know, they're very, very similar in their design. Um, so this, you know, we kind of joke that it looks like a baby Ronin, essentially. And, um, and as far as it goes, you know, design-wise, it is similar. But functionality, it isn't. You know, the Ronin has app integration. It has, um, you can uh, plug in via Bluetooth to the wireless app. That's awesome for auto calibration. This one doesn't have it. It has a USB port. And they say in the, in the manual, don't change any of the settings. So I haven't tried to. Uh, they, they claim right out of the box that it's supposed to work perfectly. Um, now, we have experience using some of the, uh, the software to be able to calibrate it. Um, and I, I'm trying to not use it. I don't want to go in there because I want to see how it works separate from that. So we haven't done that. We've just taken it out, plugged it in, and went away to go. So getting it all set up, um, your first thing you're going to notice, one of the biggest potential issues and frustrations um, is the fact that this is not a toolless setup. It is, in fact, there's Jimmy putting plants back. <laughs> um, this one has toolless design across the board, which is awesome. Um, when, we, when we did our DIY gimbal, there were so many Allen wrenches and little screws everywhere that we were going crazy. And the always fact, stripped. Always stripping screws, yes. Um, and so the, the toolless design of the Ronin was something that probably one of our favorite features about it. We're back to tools here. You know, so we got all these Allen wrenches that come with it. Now, one smart thing is they came with a, a bunch of different extra screws. Now, that was one of the frustrating things. Like, we spent far too much time at the local um, uh, uh, fast and all, yeah. And uh, uh, even online trying to find screws that were, we were stripping. Um, as far as stripping goes, I did strip one screw on here thus far. So, I mean, it kind of reminded me a little bit of some of that cheap Chinese manufacturing in that regard. But setting it up, once you get it set up, one of the nice things about it is that it's, let's assume that this is the, you're going to pick one camera package and you're only going to use that for this gimbal. Setting it up again is not that difficult because you've already balanced it for that. Now, if I change the lens, I change the camera, well, then you're going to have to rebalance it. But for me personally, this is the this would be the setup that I would use on here. This lens, this camera, that's it. So so taking the camera off there, putting it back on, there's hardly any balance to to do that because you've already set it up the first time. So that's not too big of an issue to me to have that because I'll take the half hour to set it up initially and then I won't have to do that again. Um, now going back to some of the the conveniences, the it comes with a stand. That's great. The stand is not toolless either. You have to manually screw everything in together. The Ronin stand, quick release, pops down, goes into the case. This thing, you can fit it back in the case, but it's not, you'd have to unscrew it, all the pieces separately. Putting the stand together itself would take you about five minutes. Um, so that's kind of inconvenient, though the stand is kind of small. You could throw it in the back of your, your vehicle or something like that if you wanted to. Um, but if you wanted to fly with it or whatever, you would have to disassemble the whole thing. So talking about uh, transportability, that's where one of the big things, big thumbs up for here. So over here, I've got the Ronin case. Now, I love the fact that it came with a beautiful Pelican case, custom cut foam. I mean, this stuff usually costs several hundred dollars if you get it custom made. It came with the Ronin at its base price. That's awesome. But it's big. You know, if you're going to go flying or whatever like that, this is going to be its own carry-on, or not carry-on, but its own... Uh, uh, luggage thing that you're going to have to send, that you're going to have to check. Um, this is the case for the mini gimbal, much smaller, and it's got all the, the inserts. Now you can see there's the insert for where the stand would go. Again, you have to fully disassemble that. Here's the charger for the batteries, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but very tiny. 
I mean, you, you don't even need to use this case necessarily. You could just take the gimbal and throw it in your backpack or in your luggage or whatever like that. So there's a huge thumbs up for the mini gimbal is that it, again, it's small as we can tell, but it's very, very portable, much more portable than the Ronin could be. Let's talk about batteries. Um, the Ronin uh, has uh, these proprietary batteries. They're really nice. A lot of the uh, gimbals have like your generic LiPo that you have to plug in and, um, you know, they can be, you know, price, pricing varies, but uh, this is actually a pretty smart battery. It actually has a little, you know, uh, readout to tell you what the charge is left on it. Very, very smart design, but these batteries are kind of expensive. They're over 200 bucks a piece. This is one of the things I think is really neat about the design. They actually put the batteries right in the top handle, and they use these... Uh, 18650 batteries, which are fairly generic. Um, so you can actually get these on eBay or they sell extras on their website for very cheap. So um, like another set of four might cost you 10, 20 bucks at the most. And uh, they're lithium ion and you can recharge them with the included charger. You can get extra chargers. So batteries for this thing, I've, I've heard it, it lasts for about an hour of normal usage where you can get an extra batteries. It takes two here and then two on this side. This one screws in um, and then there's your battery. So it's doesn't it's not hanging out you don't have extra cables that's a very very smart design and a big thumbs up that the battery isn't going to set you back if you want to get extra ones so we've been talking all about it let's go ahead and turn it on turning it on there's a little button here you just push it on and it gets set up so it's got a joystick right here and uh, you can control your pan your tilt and there's several there's uh, three different follow modes you've got uh, locked off so it doesn't do anything when you move it around You've got your standard pan, but no tilt, and then you've got pan and tilt follow. So right now we are in pan, but no tilt. So there's your normal gimbal operation. And I'll go ahead and turn the camera on. Um, like right now I have it balanced so that I can actually see the screen right here, which is very, very convenient. I like that. Um, if you've seen any of the, like the Nebula uh, gimbals where they're the single hand units and they've got uh, the camera mounts right above it, I've thought about getting one of those. Problem is you can't see the screen. The pan axis covers the screen up. You can't see it. And there isn't any room to put an HDMI cable to, uh, to run to a separate monitor. So this thing, plus a separate monitor could throw off the balance because the camera's right on top. I can easily put an extra monitor right here. You know, so if I want my Shogun, I can mount it right there, no problem. And uh, like I said, I've got room. So you see there's clearance for the monitor right there to tilt it up. I can operate it very comfortably right here without even having an extra screen. So that's a big thumbs up. Um, this does have a mode. I don't know if you want to call it auto calibration or exactly what they consider it. But if I press and hold the button, the mode button, now I can switch to, um, you know, to the inverted mode. And uh, for the most part, it works pretty good. If it starts to wig out, I just do that again. Get to the spot, there's a little level up here so I can make sure that's perfectly level. And then there we go. So now we've got, some people say that it didn't do inverted mode. Um, I've seen, you know, it's not perfect, but for the most part, it does do inverted mode. And if I wanna go back, again, I'll press and hold the button. Bring it back around. Make sure that it's level. And we're good to go. And then if I need to adjust on the fly, I can adjust the pan and the tilt and be good to go. Now I have run into a little bit of drift with this a couple times. It's not consistent. It's something that frustrated us a ton with our DIY gimbal. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the, how many IMUs the, the gimbal has. Uh, the Ronin, I believe, Sean can, can testify this, has additional IMUs, like at least two. I think it has two. I think it has two. Uh, we have never had any drift issues with the Ronin. It's been really, really solid. This, I had a couple small drift issues, and by drift, I mean the camera, if you just hold it still, the camera either tilts or pans or just continues going when it, it just shouldn't be going. Only happened a couple small times, um, but I've also gotten some great results with it. I've just run around and used it in normal mode, no problems, no drift, no nothing. So I haven't had this for very long. We just got it in. Right before, you know, we're going to be leaving for NAB very soon. So uh, stay tuned for NAB coverage. I haven't had a chance to work with this for a long time. 
We may be seeing a lot of mini gimbals and stuff like this at NEB, I don't know. But I wanted to crank this review out. I know Emmett Cheesy Cam has also been playing around with this. So you can check out his, his information with it. Bottom line, price point for this is a little over a thousand bucks. I think it's around 1188 or something like that currently. Price point for this is currently $3,000. Now they had a couple sales on it, but overall your average price is gonna be three grand. Is this half of this, you know, or a little bit less? Um, again, it's hard to say. The Ronin does so much more. It comes with your controller comes with a really nice case. It comes with the wireless app and all this kind of stuff. This is a different league of gimbal. And what you get for three grand is amazing, but it can't do what this does. It can't hold such a small camera. It can't uh, be this portable and this lightweight. So at the end of the day, I like having both. I really like having both options. If I wanna have this small of a package, I can. I can just run around and have this. Uh, but if we need to, to kit out and do something more advanced, we can use this. So. At the end of the day, I'd recommend getting both. Um, but if you have a small camera like the GH4, the A7S, and you want to have um, a little gimbal that can run it, this has impressed me quite a bit. The build quality is solid. It didn't feel like one of those DIY systems with all the, the tiny little bolts and nuts and everything going crazy. Um, so right now we give it a really good thumbs up and the price point is really solid. Um, now, one thing I'll mention too, if you see this uh, colored gaff tape we have on here, um, this is just the normal stuff that you can use for marking off spots. We put it on there for two reasons. On the Ronin, when we, you can put this on a C-stand, um, it sticks out when the gimbal's not on there and people can poke their eyes out on it. So the, the, the bright color just stands out a bit. Also, because this is metal, the, uh, the carbon fiber actually scratches really easily, we noticed. Um, we've already got some marks on here. And just uh, if you put the gaff tape on there, which I've done here too, it kind of protects it, just adds a little padding on there. So a little quick tip that we've uh, done. Um, but one thing I want to mention real quick is a different mode. So we talked a little bit about the, uh, you know, the standard modes. You've got your standard follow, which uh, only follows on your pan, not your tilt. I can also switch to following in tilt and pan, which is nice, quick mode. And then three buttons will get us into locked off mode. So, bam. And then again, press and hold the button. Sets up the calibration. Now, we can do whoop, inverted mode. See if that's good enough, we'll try again. Now, there's two ways to do inverted mode. You can have the camera properly level um, or you can flip it upside down. Now, if you have the camera perfectly upside down, it's actually got a pretty comfortable range. Like it's not freaking out right here. You can see um, I'm currently need to switch to follow mode. All right, so we have follow mode here, no follow mode here, and not freaking out, pretty good. So like, you know, obviously got the A7S, I could actually flip the monitor a little bit so I could see it if I wanted to. Now, if we put it to inverted mode with the camera level, all right, so now we're inverted mode and the camera is level. Fine here, I start doing this and it freaks out. So you can use it like this, just don't tilt it too much. And just stay right, right, in, right in here and it works okay. Not perfect, but okay. Now, let's go back to our standard mode. All right, so this mode, I, I kind of like. If you do this with the camera, it's so light that you can literally just walk around like this. And uh, I don't know, I think that's kind of neat because this is, this is a, almost similar to that, that single hand uh, gimbal like the Nebula and stuff, ones like that where the camera sits right above your hand. This is just very comfortable and you can do this one handed. You can get to whatever level that you want and you can do that. That's something I can't do on the Ronin. The Ronin's way too heavy to, to try and pull something like that off. So I don't know, that's, that's a neat mode. So just something to keep in mind that there's certain things that you can do with this thing that you can't do with a normal gimbal. So that's the Came TV Mini Gimbal.